Hello, welcome to another episode of Talking About Rock. I'm Rob Edwards. Let's check in with Jerry Schmidt in Nashville, some shows that are going on out there. Jerry. How you doing there, Rob? Good. I guess we haven't talked for a while. Um, there wasn't much going on this past weekend, but uh, we got some good stuff coming up this weekend in Nashville, Tennessee. I guess you could call it a 70s classic weekend. We got uh, Light in the Black, who did those wonderful Dio covers way back when, in the summertime, when they did that Dio birthday celebration. And um, we talked to Mike Simmons on the show previously, who plays guitar in that band. And um, they've been writing some originals as well. So um, I think we're going to get some special treats there on Friday night. And um, along with those guys are the East Side Gamblers. Um, we talked about Tony Higby before from the Tom Kiefer band. And um, I'd still like to get him on the show here sometime. He's the uh, lead singer and guitar player in the East Side Gamblers. And uh, we have our friends from Rock United playing that show as well, doing some great 70s covers on the heavier side, like Foreigner, Rick Derringer, Cheap Trick, things like that. So um, I think it's going to be one of those who's who of the Nashville rock scene on Friday night over at the East Side Bowl, which is um, also a new venue here in town. So it'll be my first time seeing that. And uh, Saturday night, we got more 70s classic rock with vinyl radio. Um, some very fine session players here in Nashville, four guys that get together and maybe play the lighter side of classic, classic rock, like um, Yes, um, The Guess Who, Firefall, stuff like that. Not as heavy, um, but um, they've been known to dabble in a little uh, Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, and Bad Company. But um, I would say they're much more classic and, and less heavy. And then Sunday, we have Goodbye June, who's um, making some, uh, some national um, press here, um, a pretty, pretty big band that, um, that's got a pretty good following. And they're going to be playing at 3rd and Lindsley on Sunday. Um, I got invited to that show, and I'm looking forward to that, as I really enjoy the original stuff much more than the cover stuff these days. And um, it looks like uh, we're going to talk to Kate about his original material here, Rob. So let's yep. get started. Yep. yep. So thanks for that update from Nashville. We appreciate it. There's always so much stuff going on out there. So today's Absolutely. guest uh, calls the Twin Cities home. After releasing two EPs and touring over 35 cities, selling 40,000 albums and digital singles, they're ready to break new ground with their latest album, Settle Your Sins, and they seem ready to do just that. Welcome to the show from Troll the Fight. We have with us Cade Katz. Cade, how are you? I'm amazing, guys. How are you doing? Pretty good. Hi, Cade. Man, it sounds like I should get down to Nashville and check out some shows that you just announced. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on down here. I love it. Yeah, it's definitely the Mecca it has turned into for music, not just uh, not just a country town anymore over there. As, as Jerry will tell you, he's usually busy going to shows and meeting people. And we we got quite a couple uh, interviews from, from Nashville come on the show. We had uh, Naked Gypsy Queens, uh, Noise Cult. Um, who okay. else did we have? Oblivion Myth, you know. Plummix. Plummix, yeah, we've had quite a few. But um, let's go through a little bit of history lesson here for you guys. So you started out plugging away and you guys uh, put out two EPs, uh, Throw the Fight, the self-titled, and then The Fire Within. And you started touring on that right away, yeah. trying to pump that out. How, how did that go at first? I mean, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start way back um, and just kind of get us current so the band like originally has been around for about 20 years maybe 19 and ryan bowster uh guitar is still in the band founded it um and at that time they had a singer they released uh, an ep called uh you, you just set a fire um the, the sorry right. inside yeah fire, inside, fire yeah. with the fire within right yeah. yeah fire within sorry yeah i always think afi so um <laughs> right. fire so, um <laughs> And, uh, and then shortly after that, um, replaced that singer, um, had another singer, um, they released in the pursuit of happiness after that was 
um, what doesn't kill us, and then transmissions, where I joined during the transmissions era, I guess, um, playing bass and, and starting to write with the with the guys, and then led me into now currently lead singer. We released Settle Your Sins, an EP, and then singles from from that moment. So, kind of just a quick. Quick overview, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. So that so I wanted to ask you. So the the writing on transmissions was was yeah. was a little bit different. And I was reading yeah. some of your stuff there. You really uh, try to make it more like a group effort, more collaborative with everyone. And right. I think that really shows in the tracks that I went through. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, definitely more polished than some of the the earlier stuff uh i i really i really liked it i really liked the track transmissions you know i, I really like the stuff on that thank you yeah, i think I that, that, that song yeah i think that really really got you guys you know noticed i mean you got obviously you got you got noticed uh well before that even before you yeah. were signed your name you know one of the top 10 bands by the alternate press in 2006 so it's like yeah. hey guys uh, we're not signed yet. So somebody, yeah. somebody jumped up there and, and got you in the door. It sounded like, but then Absolutely. along the way, I guess along the way you changed to change who you were signed with, uh, when they released, uh, when you guys released, uh, in pursuit of tomorrow, you got correct. It. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, shortly after that had joined, um, bullet tooth records, um, and we're signed up and through, uh, settle your sins, um, was, was the deal. And then now we're honestly, we're independent. Um, we do everything all of ourselves. We, we just um, signed a new distribution um, agreement uh, with a company and we're going to see how that goes, um, which is, you know, fantastic for us. And, you know, we're just going to constantly release music. So it's just going to help with distribution and overall. Um, but yeah, we've kind of always just had a slow, steady climb, but um, you know, you're going to see a difference with transmissions because at that point I came in and then Chris Weiser, our guitarist, um, we joined the band and Chris writes a ton and I write a ton. Um, you mentioned transmissions. I wrote that song in, in full passing ships in full, um, you know, multiple songs on that, on that record and so proud of it. And Chris, you know, he had collabed and then Ryan always adds his little, um, his, you know, we call them twi uh, sprinkles or whatever um, to kind of bring that uh, nostalgic. <laughs> throw the, the little tasty down. part at the top to make yeah. it a little little bit extra, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got the, he's he's the lead guy, and um, you know we were we were super hyped on that record. We had really good success, and I think it um, you know pushed us to just kind of evolve at that time, and then. Um, you know, after that, I mean, we released multiple singles like Echoes and I think like a Sean Mendez cover. And, you know, we're constantly trying to put out material and you're always trying to up, up your, your songwriting game, you know. Um, but and yeah, and then it led us into Settle Your Sins. And like I said, that that led me into being the lead guy, um, no longer playing bass. And honestly, like that that music was written for our other singer and you know, which uh, I had wrote a ton of it and all the guys collabed, like we've always been good with that. And so I had to spin around and then sing all new, all new lyrics and melodies to, to stuff kind of already we have written, but you know, I have a different voice, you know, I'm more, I, I like to lean more on the poppier side, you know, with a little aggression, but, more tasteful um and you know i think it's been a test to like since there has been a change i mean you know changing a lead singer is like a death wish sometimes right you know right like, sometimes that changes the total direction of the band does. but you know what but you know what i, I really I really dug the lyrics for transmissions i, I really like that and i wanted to just take a quick pause here we're gonna yeah. we're gonna play the song transmissions here from throw the fight on talking about rock thanks sounds good Another life when we were free Like a bird in flight 
Okay, we're back here on Talking About Rock with uh, Kate from Throw the Fight, and we just listened to Transmission. So actually, even before that, you, you guys were torn, even on uh, even on the EPs, even before you released the debut, right? Um, so you jumped on a couple tours, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we've, we've always been, you know, road dogs. I mean, that's that's where you go out and you're, you, you got to get new fans, you know, and, and as the years have gone, you know, obviously with, with streaming and the accessibility on different platforms, you don't have to do that as much, you know, at least for us now. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, uh, one of the biggest tours was a Black Veil Brides, Bullet for My Valentine. Uh, shows with Avenge, Papa Roach, and you know some of the stuff was prior to me being in it, which uh, which is funny because I, I'd been asked to be in the band for so many years and lived with members and stuff like that. So it was just like you know ended up being destined to be in my other bands. We're already playing with Throw the Fight, but um, it was uh, you know uh, I mean we toured with like Trapped um, pre all the drama um <laughs> right and you were always so you're always around these guys anyway it was yeah. probably in the back of their mind if we need somebody he, oh, he, man, he's was, around so yeah, so maybe yeah. maybe if we need someone we can we can grab well, but jerry and i always talk about like you're saying the live the live experience is definitely where it it's at now. You, bro. it makes and breaks you and uh you know we've always just been so proud of our live show we're high energy and you know a good time and we're just you know laying down banger after banger and having a good time and um i think that's where like our consistency has you know we've been um, lucky to have and constantly gaining new fans and you know every video we try to just connect in some way so um but yeah we definitely take pride in our in our live show even if we're we are older guys now <laughs> <laughs> well so a little more yeah but, well, you're I'm not you're, yeah. much older than you, Cade. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I said we're probably much older than you. Uh, I'm 40. I think all the guys are pretty much 40 in the band, and so, yeah, bangovers hurt. Oh, you look you look like a younger guy. We 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 put your younger guys. I mean, like Jerry said, we're 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 old guys. So you hey. know, we we've been we've been listening to concerts and going to shows since '78. You know, so yeah, nice. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> So are so, you guys um, um, largely supporting other artists on tour or do you guys yeah. step out and um, headline a show at like maybe smaller venues and clubs? Yeah. Or you know, we, we've, we've been fortunate enough to, um, you know, we, we co-headlined with all the remains uh, tour through Canada and that was successful. Uh, we, like I said, we toured with trapped, we've done, um, little runs with other national acts, but, you know, we've actually focused on just kind of like a more of a B or C market and headlining or co-headlining with maybe a popular local band or, um, you know, a, another band with you or something like that. And we've, we've just like knew where, I guess, our success was going to be and growth. And so kind of just stuck with that. And then, you know, we would take festivals. We just played a uh, uh, rock fest this summer and which was a blast. I mean, we played with um, the headliner of the night was Limp Biscuit, And so that was pretty nostalgic for us. Um, we played with Beartooth and Wage War um, this summer as well. And um, so we've just kind of you know, over the years, we were more selective of the shows and string of shows uh, and how many tours and stuff like that. But, you know, we've funny enough, we we just solidified like maybe five days coming up this spring. So, you know, as we're, we're de you definitely got to still hit the road, man, and um, play live. I think um, you should introduce these guys to Jimmy, Jimmy Crean up there in Buffalo, New York. He'd um, he'd be a good um, act to put on the bill. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. With so uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't. Yeah. So I don't know if you're familiar with uh, with the music too much seen in, in Buffalo here, but uh, when a lot of the more headlining acts come through, uh, Jimmy Crean's band Hair Nation, uh, you, a lot of times opens for them. He also uh, sings also for the Peace Brothers. Uh, he's open for countless acts. Um, Quiet That's Ride, awesome. he's going to be open in Four Slaughter. 
nice. uh, winger. So yeah, if, uh, if, if you're, if you're looking for something, maybe I can, we can, we can talk after the show or something, but um, yeah, just yeah. shoot me contacts of the email. I'll pass it on to our team. Yeah. Great. I love that. That's, that's a great idea though, Jerry. That's, that's great for sure. Definitely. Cause that's, that's yeah. so much, that's what it's all about now is, you know, the live experience, you know? So when I was looking through the numbers here and you guys were selling, you know, 40,000 albums, you must, like you were saying, you must've tapped into your demographic, right? And you, yeah, you found the right people, you know, through, right. you know, through social media or through different bands, you know, touring, touring with different acts. It's that's so great that they, you know, they picked you up like that. That was, you know, some of these bigger names there that, that are definitely, you know, Black Veil Brides, you know, they're, they're pretty, yeah. you know, big name, you know, I think you guys were, did some shows with Buck Cherry too, Lost Profits. Yeah, yeah, I saw in there. With, uh, yeah, we played with Buck Cherry. We played with Seether. Um, I mean, we played with uh, Corey Taylor, we Stone Sour, both one or the other, Slayer. Um, you know, we've definitely played with some hitters. Um, and, you know, very blessed that, that we have and had those opportunities because there's so much music and bands out there. And um, I think it kind of just attests to our longevity and we still love it. And I think when you hear our music and stuff, people feel that as well. And, you know, you just said earlier, like, we don't seem that old when we're constantly just trying to be, you know, still in love with music and fans of music. And, you know, uh, it, it's been great. You know, we're, we're very, we're very lucky. Well, definitely you changed the style a little bit from transmissions when you guys put together the new album, Sell Your Sins. Uh, it was yeah. a different writing style. It was uh, the music's a little bit more. I would, I would not, I would try to use the word contemporary, but that wouldn't really fit because it's, it's like a collaboration of different styles. Almost there's some yeah. sort of some hardcore in it. You know, there's some rock in it, and I, I think that's almost getting to be the style kind of now because we're talking some newer bands, and that's kind of like they mix it up and kind of add everything into that. Is, is that right. what the mindset kind of was for Settle Your Sins or? You know, we've, we've always just been a band where all, all of our backgrounds have kind of been like a punk band. We came from a punk band, pop punk band, post hardcore. Like I was in a huge post hardcore uh, phase and band for a pretty good chunk of time. And, you know, we just collaborating, you kind of get those um, influences who we're all coming from and hip hop. So Jeff just loves hip hop. So the beats are you know, bouncy and stuff like that. And yeah, it definitely was settle your sins. We wanted to just bring in hitters, like super fast, upbeat, punk rock, like stuff to just go nuts live on. And, um, but also have, you know, I, I love pop music and you know, want to take advantage of my ranges and stuff like that. So, you know, when a chorus comes in, it's got a poppier chorus and then there might still be some breakdowns and, um, you know, as we've, as I've taken over as singer and we're running more like songwriting together as a group, um, you know, we're constantly just trying to evolve and find like what, what our lane is. And um, I mean, you heard the new song, so that's, I, that, how do you feel that that compares to Settle Your Sins? Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, so we're not, I'm not going to give too much away. I know it's not coming out till the 18th. You know, uh, Snake Them Out, and you're nice enough to send us a little little early early present yeah. there to check it out. Very treat. nice. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, but in, in a minute, I want to I want to play a couple other videos, but I, I just got a quick question for you then before Absolutely. we go to that. So I was looking through your your songs there and I noticed you, at one point you guys did a cover for uh, the cutting crew cover there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you guys did. Uh, I, I, died, I just died in your arms tonight. Was that just a one off or does somebody really like that song? It's like, hey, we could let's let's jazz this up because I, I kind of really like it. Or was it just uh, it was just a uh, experiment? So, yeah, so as the story goes, like, um, we were recording with John Feldman at the time, and he's done, I mean, are you, you're probably familiar with John Feldman, uh, all the pop punk stuff, and now currently, like, MGK, and, um, but the the guys wanted to do the cover and, like, bring it upbeat and kind of have a, a breakdown to it, and Feldman wasn't feeling it, and they recorded it anyways, and I think just like a couple of weeks ago, it passed like 14 million or something uh, streams. Uh -huh. And, 
you know, it, 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 you know, we're, we talk about this all the time. We're like, let's release a cover. Let's do a cover. And we've done, you know, Sean Mendez and, and that still pops off, but releasing covers is like throwing darts. Sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't. It's just like back then, not a lot of rock bands were doing covers. Now, every, every other day, it's some band doing a cover of something. So, yeah. um, and, and it's different, you know, a lot of people will keep the same time and stuff like that. So it's a little more upbeat and got a solid rock uh, vibe and playing it live is so much fun because uh, everyone just, I mean, obviously knows majority of the words to it. Right. So, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. At least, at yeah. least a hook. Right. Yeah. And I saw all the streams on, on, on Spotify and I was like, yeah. well, that's, this is taken off. People have definitely, you know, locked into that, you know, and, and, and I'm sure the folks that remember the earlier song. And like you said, though, it's like, it's like throwing a dart, you know, it's, either you're going to have either the people are going to like be upset they don't like the way you did it or they're yeah. going to like hey this is a new take you know i i enjoy it you know so it can be a hit or miss you know right and i i think i think if if you don't do a lot of covers if you just put one in every once in a while that's that's right. what people are, are like they're like oh cool you know once in a while we get to hear one but yeah if you do yeah. that if you do that too much i i, I think it's i think it's it just it just drags the it album it's oversaturated out. yeah yeah, yeah. But um, tell me about some of the tracks. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say it's a great way to bring in the Generation Xers. That song was squarely right in the, the middle of the 80s when we were growing up. And um, I still hear that song mostly in retail stores. A hundred percent. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, I do. I do all the time um, when I'm out. And yeah, you should definitely check it out. You you know when you were talking earlier about the shows in nashville coming up i was i thought of that our song and i was like that would smash there <laughs> yep. oh, yeah absolutely i'm definitely a 70s and 80s guy for yeah. sure yep yep so so tell us a little bit about the tracks on uh sell your sin so uh uh particularly paper wings i wanted to check that out uh that's on next can you give us a little bit of background on that yeah, so Paper Wings is uh, kind of a funny story. We were we had a version of it, and we were tracking vocals, and I was chatting with uh, Grant, uh, who was engineering for us, and uh, Carson and Grant, they've done transmissions and Settle Your Sins. And I was like, I want kind of an upbeat, synthy vibe, like From the Ashes to New, something like that. And so then the next morning, he kind of had – an idea for a synth part so that's where you got the bah, 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 da, 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 and it kind of turns into a little bit of a party song um you know upbeat dancey and so um kind of kept the same melody and lyrics and everything and um basically the song is just um you know it, it, personal you know it's just like um people dragging you down and um but like you're going to go through some, some rough times. And it's just like, you know, a matter of getting through it and staying true to yourself. And, uh, you know, and I think it can be relatable on all sorts of aspects of people's lives and whether it's relationships or whatever it might be. And it, I mean, honestly, it's it connected huge. Uh, we were super stoked on it because it was something a little different that we had done. We hadn't brought in the electronic elements a little bit. And it's something that I always wanted to do. And I think it se separates itself from a lot of the other songs on the record. Um, maybe you can attest to that. But uh, yeah, it, it just, it was a good feel good song. You know, we just yesterday we were jumping around singing it because um, it, it's so fun to play live and automatically you just start jumping when it, when it kicks in. So um, yeah, it's just a deep song and, um, it's one of the first songs we wrote, honestly, or that I wrote for um, that record. Well, I definitely thought it was a, uh, a standout track for sure. So I wanted to play Thank the video you. here uh, real quick. You're welcome. So let's check out the video for Paper Wings from Throw the Fight on Talking About Rock. Don't answer.
Okay, we're back here on Talking About Rock. We just watched the video for Paper Wings. And you said you had a story to go along with that for us? Yeah, so funny enough is uh, we we were gearing up to play our very first show with me as a singer, as a front man. And we were going to play a ton of Settle Your Sins before it was out. And local show sold out, super hyped on it, right? And we were like, we're definitely filming. And we obviously wanted to, film a video for paper wings because we knew it was going to be probably the lead single off the off the record so uh luckily we we filmed the whole the whole deal as you just saw and literally a couple weeks after that it was like world shut down you know um and we had you know quite a few shows opportunities lined up and we were so bummed so then, like, I think the second show I ever played was as me frontman was like a year and a half later. Um, I can't remember if it was Rock Fest. And it's like, you know, here, here's my second show. Don't mess up. But uh, yeah, so it, it, I, I just love Paper Wings just because, again, you can see it's high energy. And we were able to uh, film, you know, the, the new era of the band. And we were just so hyped at that time and still are and uh yeah it, it's it's a fun one to watch cool cool yeah so the, so the other track you guys released uh the one that's out the latest one wake up that's quite a different departure from some of the other stuff yeah uh, so we released wake up and we also prior to that maybe a couple months before that was the fallout and we kind of just had a selection of songs that, that have some similarities but um obviously some experimentation and stuff like that and so we've released you know the the fallout and and wake up and yeah they're definitely a departure or a little bit different than than settle your sins and i think again i'm always just trying to push us and i'm always just consuming what everyone's doing you know architects bring me horizon all these all these guys and um, I'm constantly writing. Chris is always constantly writing. So moving forward is like we had the fallout. We wrote super fast, recorded it, and we're in the groove. So we did wake up right away and then the new one. So we're it, it's nice to just have an idea, grab it, and then go in. And, um, you know, e each one is going to be different than the other. You know, if it was my way, they'd be more chilled out. <laughs> <laughs> This fast and speed stuff. Of, uh, I mean. <laughs> speaking of chilling out, you're so mild mannered on this interview here, Cade. Yeah. What do you do on stage to get yourself fired up and produce this high energy performance that you told us about? Yeah. What I mean, all of us, honestly, in the band are very active. Like we exercise, you know, most of the week we all kind of have a, a health routine and are pretty strict with what we digest for the most part um for me you know it's chasing around my year and a half <laughs> daughter and um i recently picked up um, doing boxing so that's kind of my new uh, i was just telling my fiance today i'm like i'm actually excited for these shows coming up this spring because i'm gonna be my hopefully my cardio is on point by then and boxing is definitely <laughs> gonna test that but you know I'm, I'm all over the place and then having to sing and all that it's uh it's challenging but you know you got to do the job so where are you guys going to be touring is it going to be regional um like in the northeast yeah i think right now the not i think we're going to try to announce something in in, in a couple of weeks but Right now, it's just kind of some Midwest stuff. That's what we majority like will play in. Um, so I think there's like a Nebraska, there's a Wisconsin, um, South Dakota, um, that sort of sort of deal. And then I think the following weekend we're gonna tackle a different part of the Midwest. So kind of a a two part tour, um, so to speak. So we'll see what happens. Are you pairing up with anybody, any particular band? Yeah, um, that's cool you asked that. So we're we're actually pairing up with our longtime friends in Three Pill Morning. 
Um, and you definitely check those guys out. They've been a, a local band here for a long time. You know, the, we've both just been grinding it out for years and they've had, you know, major tour success and with, uh, Hollywood undead and, um, a, a line of bands, but, uh, couple of years ago we did a, a small run with them and it was nice because we did like a you know co-headlining tour we shared a ride and trailer and cut the cost and everything and we just all are homies so um, we're gonna do that this spring and uh, just kind of two bands going out and then have you know a couple local openers and uh, it'll be a good time yeah it sounds like it I, I hope you guys get down this way Oh uh, man, I would love to. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so I got to ask about Minneapolis, Minnesota. Every time I think of Minneapolis, I think of Prince. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk about Prince this week following the halftime show. Some people mm. loved it, some people hated it. And those who hated it felt that Prince's halftime show was the best ever. But I just got to ask about the rock scene in Minneapolis because Rob and I are talking about expanding the show into other markets. And I hear Minneapolis is a pretty good rock town. Am I correct in, in saying that and in, in what I've read? Yeah, that's a hundred percent fact. <laughs> no, um, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, honestly, like I, I didn't originally grow up here and I moved to, grew up in Montana, moved to Seattle for music and then moved to Minneapolis for, for music. And, you know, rock doesn't die here. Uh, you know, Prince and, you know, Bob Dylan. And I mean, there's a ton of longtime artists, you know, the, the Jayhawks and all these artists have been, been here for, and have a huge footprint here and it's, it's constantly evolving. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always, it's got its ups and downs, but, uh, it, it's always constant music all the time. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, Jerry. That was probably one of the, the best halftime shows, but the most memorable show, not, right? The most memorable show has got to be the Janet Jackson uh, yeah, incident, shall we say, right? Let's hope we don't have any wardrobe malfunctions on this show, Rob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be pretty. That wouldn't be pretty. Well, this is not live. This is recorded, so it's not live. That's but, true. Yes, yeah, so we, won't, we won't have edit, that. Edit, edit, Right, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I wanted to ask you one more thing before we go to the video, because yeah, I want to play the video for, for Wake Up, but I wanted to ask you yeah. one other quick question. So you're originally the bass player for the band, and then you switched yeah. to – you switched to lead vocals. Yeah. So how did you how did you feel about that transition? Had you been a lead singer before? How how did you feel about that transitioning into that into that role? Because that's a totally different role altogether. You're you're seen as as the leader of the band or the voice of the band, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um. Yeah. I always had been a front man. I mean, I started being in bands when I was twelve and was a singer and it was kind of just like you know what if i'm gonna do this somebody's gonna it's one less guy to hire right that's <laughs> so, what they say right yeah might exactly as well to, might as well learn how to sing and play guitar or play an instrument and yeah so i would in all my other bands for the most part i was always the front man um i had played bass in a post-hardcore band but also sang a lot and um and then also live with when I did join throw the fight and play bass, I sang a lot. And, you know, I, for us, it was, um, you know, the guys that had actually just brought it up to me. They're like, you're going to sing. Right. And, and <laughs> cause nobody else wants that job. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Like, you know, I, that's I usually how it goes. <laughs> nobody else wants the job. Well, yeah. And I was just like, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm okay with that. And I think me already kind of having, a presence in the band it wasn't just like oh my god who's this who's this guy you know and right and you're also at a point too where it's like who are we really going to get somebody else at this point and and getting a singer is make or break but the guys knew more the direction of things that i i would do and how i approach things and so for for all of us it's just like this 
this will be best. And it just like, again, it lit the fire and we were just so excited and everything's just been so positive and uh, we're just grateful to just keep doing it. And that's, I think that's why we keep putting out so much music because we're just so excited all the time and we're like constantly writing. There's no setbacks. So it, it, it's been, I've loved it. You know, funny enough is I had spent about two years working on a solo project called Cade Cats actually, and was focused so hard into that because I was like, I'm not going to be singing obviously with throw the fight. So I, I want to sing. And I totally had to pivot after like wanting to release a ton of stuff, which I still did, but, um, you know, having to pivot and be like, Oh, now I'm a legit like lead singer and a, you know, rock, whatever metal band we are. <laughs> right. Well, you always have that, that, uh, that, um, you know, those songs you can draw from and release at a later time or whatever. And yeah. it really seems your fans took the transition fine and even got a lot of newer fans out of it. So I think, I think uh -huh. uh, everyone was happy. The band sounds like they're happy. Definitely sounds like you made the right choice, right move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's been nice to see like we've had uh, probably the most growth we've ever had and it, it's great. It's great to see it's, you know, reassuring and, just honestly continues to motivate us more be like hey here's another here's another banger or whatever style it might be yeah so well, who do you find is um your core audience what's um what's your demographics do you do you find is it uh, both male and female um younger older or is it a mix of everything it's a pretty solid mix I, uh you know, it's like late twenties to early forties. Um, just because I feel, uh, you know, th there's, we've had long fans for 20 years. And so there's those fans that are our age, you know, forties, late thirties, and more that old rock, uh, the, the Papa Roaches in the day, the Avenged Sevenfold. Like, I feel like our older stuff was more around that style. And then as we are, we just constantly evolve and, and, and writers and style and stuff like that. So now we're starting to see even a younger demographic because it's more of a new metal um, post hardcore type uh, type vibe. So we're, we're gaining from a totally different demographic at this point right now, which is which is really cool. So I got to ask about that songwriting process. Do yeah. you guys gather together in a room or do you send files digitally? Um, and is it um, primarily the, uh, the brainchild of, of you and um, maybe one other guy or is it everybody collectively? How, how does the songwriting process work? Yeah, uh, I mean, pretty, like we it's pretty simple. Uh, Chris, our, one of our guitarists, he's always sending riffs and ideas. He'll send, you know, verse, chorus, bridge type idea um, through like just simple garage band. He's not going to like waste a ton of time if it's, if it's not something that I can hear, you know, or, or grab onto. So he'll send it to me first. And then if I'm vibing it, we'll send it to the group and kind of, you know, either store it or, or, feel it out we'll have a call on it um otherwise my writing process is different where i bring a whole song front to back pretty much done uh, and it's like you know ryan can add maybe his leads and then jeff can maybe change up some drum parts but for the most part it's it's the whole package um that's just how i've always worked um but and then we'll, we'll always bring Ryan in to, to add sprinkles and, you know, but for the most part, like, uh, you know, with singing, structuring the songs, figuring it out, everything, you know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time in the studio, nitpicking everything and production wise. And again, like we've been doing all of our new stuff, uh, on our own. So it's like, you know, uh, all hands on, uh, which has been you know, fantastic, really. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we kind of have a couple processes. Um, funny enough, last weekend, uh, we did a, a weekend getaway. So just Chris, 
guitarist, myself, and then Ryan, the other guitarist, we went away to Chris's cabin and we've had like probably 20 some songs just kicking around over the last couple of years. And we're like, we need to comb through these and figure out what, what we want, because we've got, we've got some plans for this, this year. So, but we need to figure out what material we want. So for the first time ever, we were in the same room kind of listening back to tracks and um, seeing what hit and what didn't and worked on some songs and we actually wrote a song together for the first time probably ever because we're always just sending stuff back like you mentioned earlier like digitally or you know just through text and stuff like that right um so it it was really cool and it was something that i kind of pushed for us to do because again we've never done it and um i mean we've done it in pieces but never like in the same room and uh yeah so you know and we're we vibe that we thought it was super cool and i think moving forward we're like that's that experience worked and was healthy for us so let's do it again yeah absolutely so where did you guys go to um your your weekend getaway was it like a a cabin or a retreat or to the lake or what yeah it was just uh so chris has a cabin about two hours south or north of of the cities here and it's right on a lake and uh just secluded you know small town um one bar basically (laughs) and yeah we just were locked away and woke up really early in the morning one of the days i mean we were in our pajamas just riding all day until about five and uh yeah just super productive and we walked away with 10 songs that we uh are um probably going to make it and then we're going to actually narrow that down to six probably um and and release those at some point we've got some producers that want to work with us and all that fun stuff so there's um we're just trying to get them together and then see what happens yeah that seems to be a very very productive weekend there yeah that seems to be a a a great process for lots of bands you know i've read lots of bands done that from you know the beatles to black sabbath to you name it, you know, lock yourselves away in a secluded area. Like you said, there's only one bar in the town and that's where you all go if you're going to get a beer or whatever. But right. that seems to be the one of the most productive ways just to get it done. Because sometimes you're like under the gun. It's like, OK, we got to write this material. Although you yeah. guys, you know, you don't have a deal right now to, to do that. You're doing it yourself, you said. But sometimes yeah. but uh, you still, have... there is a kind of a gun to your head being like, I mean, if you're not constantly putting out stuff, you know, you, you have to constantly be um in people's face and on on people's radar yeah definitely definitely especially with the way music is now well let's take a uh let's take a quick pause and check out the uh video for wake up here from settle your sins on uh talking about rock from throw the wake up, wake up.
Hello, we're back on Talking About Rock. We just watched the video for Wake Up from Throw the Fight. So quite a different uh, a sound than you guys had previously. You know, you really really mixed it up with, with that a lot from some of your other tracks. Yeah. And then you have you have a new track coming out that's that's even a little bit different from that coming out on the 18th, right? <laughs> so you guys, lots of different styles going on. You're just you are you just trying new things at this point. Change you know, is good. Change is good. You know, and that, like I was saying earlier, just the 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 constant of releasing stuff versus an album, right? You can release a a collection of songs, and uh, people are like, oh, you know this. I don't like this song or I like that song and I, or I don't like the style or whatever. And, you know, for us, it's just like each single is its own story. It's its own package. It's going to have its own art. Um, it's its own album. And I, yeah, it's, it's almost like if you want, it's the digital equivalent, what it used to be, right. They yeah. used to release, release singles and then they, then they'd come out with an album. So that's kind of what, what is going to come back? I've seen a lot of artists do. They'll say, we have this album coming out. So here's the first single. And then they'll release maybe three singles or something. And then they'll put out the whole product. Absolutely. And I mean, for us, we're, we've got busy lives. And so if we focus on one song or a collection of songs and kind of hammer those out, we can place those throughout the year. And, and, you know, whether it comes to be an EP or whatever, or, or an album, you can release them as singles throughout and, and, and it works for us. It's, it's actually been really nice. And, you know, with the fallout and then wake up, yeah, they're, they're a little more aggressive, um, vocal content or lyrical content is, um, heavy, you know, um, as far as depth and emotions and all that stuff hopefully relatable, um, good or bad. And uh, yeah, and then with Snake Mountain, funny thing is Snake Mountain, the music was supposed to be, or was on the block for, writing block for uh, Settle Your Sins. And it, it didn't make the cut. And funny enough, at that time, I had my own lyrics and melodies over it. And we listened back to it and it wasn't that good. I'm going to be honest, but <laughs> we, we, we all loved snake mountain and we just liked the riffs. But after listening to it, we're like, oh, some of it's a little dated and needs to be, you know, brought to 2022. And so we kind of just took an older version of the song and just elevated it and kind of gave it a whole new, um, like, did like a makeup job on it you know like a before and after and um yeah and as the song went on you know we've we've slowly been introducing ryan the singer or guitarist um, to scream more and kind of just elevate um some of the you know moments of the song and help fill things out and it's been awesome um so and it's a cool blend and almost bringing back that old um emo phase of like taking back sunday seeing a scream type vibe and yeah it, it's just fun to to experiment and even bringing in guys that used to never sing or do certain roles to to see where they shine yeah i've seen a lot of artists do kind of what you're saying you know you have an older track maybe and you and you listen back to it again it was maybe it's sitting in the drawer somewhere on a cassette for a couple of years and you listen to it again and it's still good, but it kind of needs a newer vibe or something, yeah. something that to, to, to snazz it, you know, me a little more snazzy. Because I, I remember reading about Tom Kiefer from Cinderella. He had some tracks that were sitting in the drawer for like six years, you know, and he, he never released yeah. them until, he, you know, and then he just jazzed them up again. It's like, these are still good songs. You know, David Coverdale, same thing, Whitesnake. He does the same thing on his track. So, dude, I have thousands of, I call them song ghosts. You know, they're just, they're always there. They, they'll they come up, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier, I have a, I do a, I have a solo project and, you know, some of these songs, some of my first that I released were six, seven, eight years old, you know, and, that, uh, but they still, still hit. Is right. a Snake Mountain a real place? <laughs> <laughs> Ask, right? That was when they went to the cabin. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. What's funny is we've never done this. Is 
Chris, I, I always have like my lyric, uh, my song titles are usually what it ends up being, right? Well, Chris is always has the funniest stuff ever. And he, he named this Snake Mountain. And I don't know why. Sometimes it's usually like a reference somewhere of some song that influenced him or whatever it might be. But we always have been like Snake Mountain, Snake Mountain. And finally, when we started tracking it and, and wrapping it up, uh, we're like, we're not changing name. It's it's got to be Snake Mountain. I'm like, totally, because <laughs> if I ever change the name, it, they're going to be like, what? What song is that? I'll be like, Snake Mountain. And I, and I was like, you know what? It, let's keep it. And actually, weirdly enough, the the title almost fits the the lyrical content in a way. So it's just like, I don't know. It's a weird spin, but the art looks thick and it, it slams. It's it's heavy. Yeah, the art is very cool on on your website for sure. Uh, it's yeah, coming out you. March March eighteenth. Uh, get yeah. your track for uh, the new uh, Throw the Fight track. Uh, Snake Mountain is going to be coming out. And I want one last question to ask you. And I'm, I don't know if you if you say I have something else to add, Jerry. But I have one last question to ask you. Who would you say has influenced you as, as a songwriter? Is there um, some people in the past that that you kind of really listened to and really helped influence how you write or? Yeah, I, I think it's constantly changed throughout the years. Um, I've, I've always written songs, but I feel like over the last maybe four or five years, I've um, got it, got my ways and understand it a little bit better, the ins and outs and um, take it a little more serious, I guess, instead of just like winging it. And if it sounds cool, it's like more methodical, I guess. And um, but I mean, I listen to all sorts of genres and styles and, um, you know, I, I love the Deftones. I love Architects, um, Bring Me Horizon, uh, bands like that where they take the sing scream and melodic elements and stuff like that. And, um, but I also listen to, you know, super chill folk music like Bon Iver or, um, goody grace and or hip-hop stuff you know um so i'm constantly inspired but also i know like where my ranges are and where i'm comfortable at but definitely like falsetto stuff for years ago i found city and color and i was like man i want to sing like that and just practicing and trying to finesse that and you know uh, with screaming the same thing it's like you just try to figure it out and imitate you know, some of your favorite artists like Chester, obviously from Lincoln Park. And um, there was even parts in Wake Up where um, when we tracked it, Jeremy, who Jeremy Turk, who records us, he's like, dude, you sound like Chester right now. I'm just like, oh, my God, that's OK. I'll take that. Um, but yeah, just I think just constantly listening to new artists and not just closing the doors of uh, one style or whatever and um you know music finds you so whatever you connect with one way is probably going to show in your art yeah i just uh, i just always find that find that so interesting be because yeah. you know i've read a lot of the different artists you know who they quote as their inspiration and and who kind of got them into music obviously you know in our generation the beatles was the big catalyst for a lot of the bands coming out, you know, and Ozzy and Sabbath and, and Zeppelin, they always, you know, credit them, to, you know, to this being like, you know, well, we saw them on TV and then we knew what we wanted to do, you know, that kind of thing um, yeah. always. And uh, I even, I even, for the heck of it, I even tweeted McCartney today because he would, they were saying, you know, you know, what do you, you know, I have a question for him. I'm like, well, this guy's the, one of the biggest influences for anybody. So, Mr. McCartney, who's your influence? You know, I don't think he'll get back to me, but <laughs> but that would be amazing to know, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I got into music. I was in love with music at a very, very young age, you know, days. Um, and I see that in my daughter now, so it makes sense. And I grew up on classic rock. I mean, my dad had Bruce Springsteen, John Mellencamp, Eric Clapton. I was obsessed with Stevie Ray Vaughan. He was a reason, him and Slash were the reason I started guitar when I was seven years old. Um, you know, I was into Motley Crue and uh, I just consumed music every 
era the grunge came and it was just like give me more of the emo phase like and so it's all just like these different years and styles like jammed in and you know some of it comes out <laughs> through our own music which is you know nuts i'm sure it happens for movie directors and other artists in some other forms well i was going to ask the uh, the same kind of question there about uh, the singers that you like to emulate and um, the guys that you really enjoyed throughout the years and uh, certainly chester was uh, was a big influence on that yeah. generation um, throughout the 90s and the 2000s and um, i certainly have some lincoln park in my collection too and that was um, definitely a great loss when we heard about that that day yeah that his life yeah shocking shocking uh yeah i I, i'd seen them quite a few times uh one of the first times on an oz fest and they had just got moved to main stage the day i got to see them and uh it was with like drowning pool and just unbelievable and uh even then it's just like when you had that hybrid you know that cross and they did it tastefully it it was it, it opened the doors for every every artist too um, and to kind of think outside the box and start bringing all these different elements and styles of music in and making it acceptable. And I think they were one of the bands that was kind of the bridge between me and my son. Um, yep. It kind of hit, um, hit me as a Generation Xer, and my son Ethan also loved them as a millennial, so it was, um, was perfectly... Um, seated right in that gap between the two generations and um so cool both of us embraced lincoln park yeah absolutely i mean it it had a special place and i mean it still does for you know in our hearts for many many millions of people uh, which is fascinating i mean that's the ultimate goal really you know we like i said earlier we're just so grateful that we get to play music put out music and hopefully it connects and that's that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Well, that's uh, that's all I have, Rob. Back to you. Okay. So, else? oh yeah. Well, let's we can wrap things up here, uh, Kate. If you want to tell us any other future plans about what's going on with Throw the Fight or where folks should check you out, I know your music is all over the place. You guys are on Spotify. <laughs> you're on iTunes. You're on whatever the other streaming services are you're probably on Bandcamp too right everything yeah so everyone <laughs> yeah everyone can find us at throwthefight.com and that's your one stop shop um or otherwise we're on Instagram at throwthefightmn twitter's throwthefight um myself i'm at Cade Cats or Cade Cats music and give me a follow on Instagram twitter uh, or cadecats.com and yeah, you might uh, want to spell that out. That's with K's, correct? Yeah, K K A D E K A T Z, Cade Cats, and yeah, uh, our music is on every platform. Um, I mean, you just look us up; it's it's there. All of our videos are on YouTube, and yeah, we're we're gonna constantly release a ton of music throughout 2022. Uh, we've got a ton in the bank already, and just waiting for their for their uh, birth date and uh yeah just you know check us out we've got like i said 20 years of music all online and you know add us to your playlist that helps and and keep sharing it with your friends and then yeah we will be announcing a uh a little run here at the end of april um so yeah if you if you want to check those dates out just go to throw the fight.com great great we look forward to hearing more from you guys yeah, Thank you so I, much. I hope you guys are able to uh, dip down into the south here a little bit. Um, yeah, a few years back we were able to. I can't remember where we played though. Um, God, it's driving me nuts. I've been trying to think of it this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's certainly um, a lot of fans that would enjoy you guys down here and would love your sound. So, yeah. Uh, Hopefully you make it down here this year sometime. Yeah, I would love to. I, w I would love to just make it down there just because there's so many songwriters down there. And that's, 
you know, just songwriting is like my biggest passion is just constantly trying to write great songs. And, and there's a ton of them down there. Yeah, um, without a doubt. Yep, definitely, definitely. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. And if you folks out there have questions or comments for us, please feel free to email us at talkingaboutrock at gmail.com. Please like us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And as always, for this interview and others, please check us out on our YouTube channel. Kay, thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been a pleasure. Hey, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Kay. You're awesome. All right, man. Have a great night. We hope to hear more from you guys. Yeah, thanks again. Cheers. We enjoyed it.